time and uh, do a uh, make with me to talk about badges and digital badges. I posted some of the stuff in the Connected Learning MOOC to talk about badges. Uh, we've also talked about um, badges in uh, the Teach the Web MOOC that just wrapped up. And I just wanted to share some of the stuff that I did and try and help people think through uh, some of this work. So, Terry, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm Terry Elliott, and uh, I am one of the facilitators for the uh, Connected Learning MOOC that the National Writing Project is doing. And uh, by the way, we'll also be doing a Google Hangout on air tonight, uh, Make With Me About Credos. That's the next. That's the next cycle that we're working on. Um, I'm interested in badges because uh, I'm also interested in gaming, mm -hmm. in, in education. Uh, I teach um, higher ed, uh, Western Kentucky University, and with the Western Kentucky University Writing Project as a tech liaison. So uh, uh, I'm interested in gamifying the classroom, but I hate. I cringe when I even say the word gamify or gamification. It's just. Yeah. <laughs> makes me feel uncomfortable, but the ideas there are kind of like badges are, you know, they're very rich, so I'd like to know more. Yeah, so uh, thank you for joining in. Um, what I'll do is I'll try and provide as brief an overview as possible. Let me see how I can screen share here. Um, I want to show... All right, so we'll start with... Make sure this doesn't crash. Looking good. Gone. Oh, there he is. There I go. I'm still yeah, as soon as I switched it over. Oh, okay. I switched over to screen share, and then it crashed on me. Let me try one more time. We'll see what happens. All right, so we will do this. All right, let's try this one more time. All right, it looks like I'm showing my screen, and nothing's crashing so far. All right, so. My thinking about badges started up because I wanted to figure out a way to, uh, we had a lot of this um, ways that we teachers could use technology, and not just teachers K through 12, but teachers in higher ed as well, how they could use technology in their classroom. Um, and so a, a colleague of mine, Greg McBerry, and I, we developed an instructional model to figure out, it, it built off a lot of the work that we used previously. Uh, when we were at UConn researching, we helped define online reading comprehension, and we tried to help uh, frame, we've been framing, online collaborative inquiry and online content construction. And we basically state that if you do those three, you can say that you're using technology authentically, effectively. At the same time, uh, I've been working with, I don't know if it's still on here, I've been working with uh, Mozilla on the... Great work, and the nice thing is that a lot of the work in the in the web literacies mirrors the work that we've been doing with content construction. So what they say is basically if you include exploring, building, and connecting, uh, then you can say that you are an individual that is web literate, whatever that means. And so a lot of these elements you see are, are mimicked with stuff that we're doing in the Connected Learning MOOC and then the Teach the Web MOOC. Um, we're still revising these as we speak. Uh, the challenge is that in terms of uh, spreading this information, like I can go and I, you know, I'll be going to a workshop uh, the first week of August in Cambridge or I'll work with teachers in, in Pennsylvania 
The problem is that it's not really spreading. So what I wanted to do is I'm a believer in open ed. I wanted to put these materials online, uh, make them freely available, let anybody take them and use them and run with them. Um, at the same time, uh, Terry, exactly what you were saying is that it basically, I was interested in badges and I was also interested in uh, gamifying the environment. So I tried to, to think about how could I make it a, you know, an opportunity for people to get involved and think about the model and construct content that would be representative of what would happen in the model. Um, so I went into uh, Google Sites. I've been building this free uh, MOOC. It's not massive. It is open and online. Uh, it's not really a class. It's more of a community. But basically I said, okay, there's five modules in this. Um, and each one of the modules, what I want teachers to do is I want them to create content and share it openly online so other people can see what the content looks like and, and get examples and sort of crowdsource these exemplars. Um, uh, Ian, could you, yeah. I don't know if uh, Jeannie's having the same problem, but uh, I'm only seeing the small version of your screen at the bottom. Um, oh, I'm, really? Let me see if I can click on it. Is that working now? No, it might just be me. I don't know. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Let me see. Now, let me see if I can turn on the cameraman and just say broadcast a large video. All right, we'll see if that works. Let's see if it stays there for a while. Um, so we have five modules, and I wanted to crowdsource this and say, okay, as many, you know, it's open, it's online. Uh, Feel free to go in, create content, but the thing is, we want to know, okay, who has created content? Um, so I reached out to some people on Google Plus that do a lot of work in gaming. Uh, Roger Travis uh, and his colleagues at UConn, they were more than helpful, and they basically said, in order to really get people involved in gaming, you want to make it uh, worthwhile, and you want to build a community and a culture where people want to share. People are going to go there. That's the gaming element that you that you want to build in, plus levels and accomplishments. So the next thing that we do is we start to define, uh, we identify badges. So you'll see up on the top, we've got five different badges. Our thinking in terms of the badges was we wanted to have one badge be awarded for each one of the levels or each one of the modules in this classroom. So if I go back to, I'm going to my blog where I documented all this the other day. So what we basically said is, okay, we're going to allow participants in this. I'll skip down to where we are now. We're going to allow participants to um, earn badges for completion of this. Okay, so each one of these badges stands for one of the modules. So there's five modules in it. This is online uh, content construction. This is multimodal tutorials. This one is online reading comprehension. This is online collaborative inquiry. And then this one is digital identity. And the idea is that if you're a teacher and you go through and you finish the module on online content construction, the, the main way to go through and finish that module is that you basically read through all the materials, read through all the exemplars, post the reflection pieces, and the key is that you post your work openly online and Creative Commons license your work. If you do that, you can pledge for the badge. Hey, Chad. So if you pledge for the badge, you go through all of our components and you complete all the work, um, then you get the badge for that piece, you know, for that piece. If you complete all five badges, then you get the mentor badge. We're, we're still debating as to what the label is, but the mentor badge basically is this orange one in the middle. The mentor badge basically means that you've made it through all five modules of the course and now you can guide others through the course. Mm -hmm. 
So then the key would be, from my vantage point, is this is an open resource. Teachers could go through, they could follow through any one of the modules, so they could go through multimodal tutorials. And in the module, we have uh, a lecture by me. So if you can't sleep at night and you really want to go to sleep immediately, you can <laughs> watch a lecture by me talking about it. Uh, I have readings that I posted in there. Uh, there is a video gallery, so a bunch of YouTube clips. Ian, uh, but, yeah, go ahead. Can you share the URL in the chat so I can? Yeah, yeah start playing around with it. Thank you. So what we have is. Thank you. So there's the link to it. I'm still making final edits here. Um, but basically, the idea would be that let's say I'm a teacher um, here in Connecticut. And the cool thing is, I've gotten interest from people globally on Google. But let's say I'm a teacher in Connecticut and I want to work with teachers in my district um, to use technology. Uh, back when I was teaching middle school and high school, I used to run PD and workshops with teachers. And the truth of the matter is a lot of the content that I would use in my PD, it was stuff I created because there's not a lot out there if you're a teacher and you're working with other teachers. So I said, let's put stuff online. Uh, you can guide other teachers through it. If you've been awarded this mentor level badge, now you can award badges. So you can go through this on your own time, earn the badges, get the mentor level badge, get this little orange badge, which is like a meta level badge. And that basically says that you now can be a guide for others as they go through the community. And then you can start awarding badges to others as well. Uh, so it's basically a pyramid scheme where I make no <laughs> money at all. <laughs> um, so that's where we're at now. Um, in order to figure out how to develop the badges, that's where, uh, that's the next piece of the puzzle. But that's basically why we started developing these badges and where we are now. Uh, questions so far? I guess I still um, don't understand, like, how you make a badge. I mean, say, you know, say I wanted to try to incorporate this in a classroom. Um, I mean, I wouldn't even know how to, I don't play games, maybe that's the problem, I, I'm not a gamer, but how yep. would I, you know, just even get started helping students, like, do they make their own, do I make them, like, I don't really even get the whole concept, I guess. Yeah, well, part of it is, excellent, excellent question, part of it is that it's almost like, um, I equate it to when I first started using Evernote, one of the challenges with Evernote is that it can be pretty much anything under the sun. Um, and that's one of the issues that I had. So let me see if I can zoom out. So I put this Coggle out there the other day, um, and that's online. And basically what I did is I tried to document my steps. So they're all there. The first thing that I would recommend is, you know, after we sort of understand what badges are, and I'm putting together a blog post that has all of the... Um, the videos we used, all the stuff that we read. Once you get beyond that part, the next step would be where are these badges coming from? And it could be something that you create. It could be something that your students create. Um, it, it, when I met with Doug Belshaw to talk about this, he talked about how um, you know he was teaching and they had several students that they wanted to highlight a specific discipline uh, and, and that worked well, but then they had other kids that, for them, it was just a, a challenge to get in and come to school. So they wanted to give a badge to the one kid that hopped on like three city buses to come into school all the time. Um, so that's one of the challenges, is that badges could be pretty much, at least from my vantage point, they could be pretty much anything. Uh, it just depends on what is, you have to be able to, on a granular level, define the skill or the competency for the badge. So, so I could, know, yeah, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go um, for it. Okay. So I, I guess I'm interested because I see this value in when I taught, I mean, I don't teach it right now, but I taught first year comp. One of the problems was we had a really proscriptive 
view of their writing and what we evaluated, you know. Uh, so we had to, you know, we were given a rubric and a set of assignments they had to do. So, for example, student had to learn how to do a summary, and there was a real rigid way that we were, they were expected to write that. Or, for example, like their argument papers, you know, we were looking for very specific things that we were grading, um, you know, that we were told to by the person who ran the program. But often I felt students were really frustrated because, you know, maybe their thesis statement needed work and they didn't have enough evidence and they didn't include counter arguments and all those things we evaluated using the rubric. But they felt that they had learned, like, you know, certain things um, and, you know, they were more personally connected to their writing and they wanted some way of that being recognized. So let's say I was teaching how to write, like, a basic argument and I said, okay, well, I graded you based on the rubric and you got a C. But then, you know, what else could I look at in their writing to make a badge? Does that make sense? Like, I guess as a comp, former comp teacher, I'm trying to look at it from that perspective. Does anyone That's have an excellent it? example. I mean, so think about it. When I used to teach, um, you know, when we'd have kids write in class, I loved having my kids peer edit and peer review because I knew that my students would be far more critical of each other than I ever would be as the classroom teacher. Uh, at the same time, a lot of times our rubrics, uh, things fall through the cracks. So there are some students that are great at peer editing and peer review. And they, you know, can think critically about another student's work without being offensive. And that's a skill. And a lot of times, you know, as teachers, we're not supposed to grade dispositions. You know, we're not supposed to highlight that. Uh, previously, what we would do is we'd say, okay, in the back of your head, you knew that Jose was fantastic in terms of being a peer editor. And so if another student needed help, you would say, okay, I know that Jose is really great at this. Why don't you sit down with him and have him read your paper? And if he thinks that it's good, then you're pretty much all set. Uh, or another time what you could do is, you know, we'd write up on the board, on the whiteboard, Okay, if you need help with like copy paste, go talk to Cassandra. If you need help with, um, you know, how to embed a video clip, go talk to Mara Cruz. Uh, badges provide an opportunity to highlight those kids in an online space. I see. So, so if you had an online classroom, you know, if you had an environment set up, your kids were all online. They're all writing online. Um, you know, you had a, a Google Plus community or they all had their own blogs. What you could do is, if each student had their own blog, you could review their work or look at their work online or offline and say, you know what, I recognize a specific behavior that, you know, Jose has that I want to highlight and I want other students to recognize that this is important or this is valuable to our community. And then you give Jose the badge for that. Uh, sometimes kids can pledge for a badge. Uh, some of the badges now you say, okay, it, you know, it, you, it's open and, and you can pledge for it or I can only award it. So it, it, you basically have to identify what's important for you and your community and then create the badge for that. Uh, Ian, uh, the thing that comes to mind for me when you're talking about rubrics, um, and, you know, they are, they're, they're very, they're limited because yeah because of the reasons that you talk about. But it seems to me that if they, if the students also had their own uh, rubric, then they could develop their own badges that would parallel yep. the rubric. And that would be a way, you know, to get around a system where you're constrained by forces above and beyond you. Simply have them create another rubric and figure out a way to add that into the, the final assessment. I agree. I think that, you know, in writing, and uh, I also think to a larger extent, as we have kids construct online content, you know, what we're seeing in the Teach the Web MOOC and also in the Connected Learning MOOC is that it's challenging to have kids go in the classroom and make. You know, we're trying to figure out, okay, are there parallels between the writing process and having kids sit down and remix a video? Okay, so how do we build that and scaffold it in? I think a large part of it is that we have to focus on the process involved. And that's where things can slip through the rubric. You know, there's elements or aspects of the of 
the, the construction piece or the process side that we that we lose. And so yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Use the badges as a way to you know potentially highlight things that you see and then also have the kids identify aspects that they think are important that they would want to develop a badge for. Um, you're talking about real power in your classroom growing over time. Yeah, and, and also, um, I mean, when I apply this to the to CL MOOC, um, I'm thinking that if we had gotten together at the beginning in May and started talking about badges, mm -hmm. I don't think that would have worked. I think that we can grow the badges out of our experience if it looks like something that's, I mean, that we want to try or that we want to offer if this is offered, if this, if this MOOC is offered again. But I think, you know, sometimes I think that the, that the make cycles are so complex and variable that you don't really know. <laughs> you don't really know what a badge would be for that. It's hard right. to define something yeah. like that. I think the key is that you want it to be authentic. You know, I mean, it's, it has to be authentic to the community, to the culture. If you, if you go into it, you, one of the benefits of having a badge in a make cycle is that for people that are on the periphery, you know, so we have a lot of people there's about 850 odd people in this CL MOOC. You know, there are a regular cast of characters that are always publishing and posting, but then you have a lot of people on the periphery that are trying to figure out, okay, how do I get involved? Uh, that's one of the reflections that came out of the Teach the Web MOOC, is that there are, you know, there's a regular cast of characters. The remainder of the people are trying to figure out what this means, and, and some of them need exemplars to look at. Yeah. Um, the challenge is that, you know, there, there are multiple challenges. By providing a badge for certain people, then you're privileging certain certain work. You know, then you're, it, I was the sort of teacher that didn't like giving exemplars to my students because I felt like that limited the results that I got. Um, so it, it is a challenge. You know, I mean, you could come out of this CL MOOC and say, okay, next year when we run this, we will have badges, but maybe it won't be for makes or make cycles. Maybe we'll have badges for building community. Yeah, yeah, or, something that know. would yeah, something that would reflect what it is the facilitators do, or what they what they call them super mentors yep. in Teach the Web. Yep. Is, you know that those kinds of values we, we would actually we would actually badge values. You know, I mean, then you start to build culture, and this is the gaming part that you mentioned earlier. It, it's gaming more from the perspective of we want to make it interesting and valuable. You know, I mean, if, if the content is value added, people will get involved. People will want to get involved. And that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to add value to the product that you're putting out there online. So I just wanted to jump in and uh, say this is Paul. So hi, hey, Ian. Paul. Thanks for, thanks for uh, starting this hangout. This is Not awesome. Problem. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I just want to say that um, one of the things that, you know, we at the National Writing Project have been thinking about with regard to badges is just the importance of starting with a particular framework. Um, so I, I joined the conversation late, so you may have um, talked about this already. Um, so, I, you know, I think that there are a couple of ways to jump in with, I mean, there are, I'm sure, many ways to jump in with badges. You know, one is to start um, making badges and then see what happens. And then the other is, um, and I think maybe this is what Terry was getting at, is, is also to think about, well, so what is a framework that would encompass um, the, the kind of learning that we want to see badged, for instance? And, you know, and that could be, so I, I, again, jumped in late, but I heard Jeannie talking about, so if you had a classroom, for instance, you know, what could badging look like? And I think to me the, the huge power of badging is not necessarily badging as a way to create um, a, a framework for uh, an individual classroom, for instance, but it's this ability to think of uh, a badging framework as something that encompasses a whole set of skills and competencies that um, move beyond the, the classroom. And again, I apologize if, you know, you guys have already talked about that, but, um, but, but I just wanted to say that in response, you know, to, to Jeannie. Um, it's, this, it's this notion that if we look across not just um, what our kids are doing here within the four walls of this classroom, or even the four, you know, virtual walls of this virtual classroom, but, you know, what is it that they're doing? Um, what can we badge as a competency um, that, you know, that pulls in 
um, the ability to work with mentors or to work with peers, as you were talking about, Ian, across contexts. You know, that to me is the exciting possibility with regard to badges. And I just wanted to um, mention one other thing in relation to the question that Jeannie posed, and you all may be familiar with this already, but I think um, a, an interesting example of the way in which badges are being implemented and have been for a little while is, um, is what Paul Allison is doing at youthvoices.net. So I don't know if you've seen that, but I'll, um, I'll post a link. Youth Voices is great, but sometimes it's hard to find actually exactly what you're looking for um, at Youth Voices. So let me just dig that up, and, and I'll point you in that direction. Um, but it's been this interesting way for, I think, youth to... Um, you know, to be like peer um, deliberators, I guess, of the of the issuing of badges in a framework that you know Paul has created, linked to this idea of um, you know argument, for instance, um, in an ELA uh, way that has a, at its heart actually inquiry. Um, so those are just a few things that I I, I wanted to touch upon. But I, I think the idea of, of badging is you know, definitely very exciting. Yeah, I think it's a. Uh... One of the things that was shown earlier, Paul, is one of the rationale for this. I'll quickly go through that. Um, what I did is I've been working on, with Greg McVeary, we developed this model to, have, to, to provide guidance for teachers that are looking for ways to integrate technology into the classroom. It connects to Common Core, which we know is the big dog in most of our classrooms. Uh, it also uh, it applies and attaches to the Mozilla Web Literacies. Um, and for us, the challenge was that we wanted teachers to be able to look at exemplars. So the use of badges is a way to motivate educators to create content and put it online. Um, so they'd go through a module, complete the module, um, and then if they create a multimodal tutorial, they earn the multimodal tutorial badge, and then they can start to guide others through. Um, one of the things that uh, my students taught me when we were looking through, um, when we were conducting our lit review on badges, is that they identified for me that the, 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 the nice part about badges was the fact that they could um, look at others. Uh, so, you know, you, let's say you're in a building and you want to have your students using YouTube in the classroom. You, you look around and you figure, okay, who in this building right now is using YouTube? You know, and, and, and it's an online way to identify expertise that we wouldn't normally talk about in the classroom or in the building. Um, and so the other thing that the students pointed out is that maybe it's an opportunity for them to look at others and say, you know, I'm really trying to use popcorn in my classroom. I noticed, you know, we're in the same building. You were involved in the Teach the Web MOOC this summer. And I notice that you have a badge for popcorn. You know, is there a way that you know you can share some of this with me? Um, and, and the other piece that Terry just brought up is exactly true. Let's take a look at what it means to actually build a badge. Um, what Jeannie was getting back to earlier. So let's say you want to build a badge. I've been using uh, the Mozilla platform. Uh, they relaunched this uh, recently. I think it works really well. Uh, there are uh, numerous platforms out there. Um, I use this one. It works for me. I haven't had any issues so far. Uh, Dashlane's taken forever to log me in. Uh, but the nice thing about this is once you identify what the skill is or you work with your students and you identify uh, the skill, you need to define it and be as granular as possible when you define what the skill is. So let's see if it will log me in. But the nice thing is that it will also it will um, allow you to add tags so you can tag it and link to other is it easier and then it doesn't work. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to do is if when you create your badge you can tag it to other stuff. So in here I have uh, the one badge that I've test driven so far 
is the digital architect badge. Okay, um, this is a way for me to, as I as I put the MOOC out there online or as I test badges, people that sort of field test it or act as a content area expert for me and, and test this environment, I want to recognize that. So I have a little description. Uh, I have tags that I've left behind. So this was part of the Teach the Web MOOC. Uh, when it was created, uh, I can. these are people that were awarded the badge so far. Uh, and then I can send out nominations by email. So right now I'm using um, badges.mozilla.org. So here's what you need to know in order to build a badge. So I already went through on the on the blog, and I'll put I'll repost that later. All of the steps that I went through, um, but basically there's a couple things that you want to know. Uh, I would I would suggest before you start it, uh, do your homework. You know, and and what that means is all of these discussions that we're having here. Um, you know, think about what a badge would be. What do you want to highlight? So then the creation part pro, uh, part the part of the process is pretty easy. You know, what's the title of the badge? Uh, upload an image. I have an entire blog post about images, so you can <laughs> feel free to put yourself to sleep by reading that. Um, probably the most important part is the description and the tags. Um, so Jeannie, you can use, you can Photoshop stuff. Um, you know, there's tons of, I, I went online and I tried to find some open content that I could use as badges, uh, then we felt like it didn't exactly meet what we wanted, so we started developing our own. Um, so when you build this, the two important parts for me are the tags and the description. The tags would be linking it to other areas, uh, so you could link it to, uh, you know, Common Core State Standards, you could link it to uh, dispositions, you could link it to whatever. The description is where you're going to type up exactly what you're measuring. Okay, so you want to make this as granular as possible. This is where the real uh, meat or value in the badge comes. So the, the, the value in this doesn't really come from the image that you pick. The value doesn't really come from the title. The value is all in the metadata. The value is in this description that you add in. Specifically, what are you trying to measure? Uh, when I talked with Doug Belshaw, he was saying that somebody, uh, he wanted an awesome badge. And so, you know, there was very little value to it, but he wanted an awesome badge. So the, the challenge is, what is it that you're measuring? And, and can you uh, quantify or qualify those elements or those aspects in the description part? So once you type in your title, you get the image, you have the description, you tag it. Um, then there's other pieces about how the nominations work. You create the badge. Uh, so if we go back to the one that I created, uh, here's my digital architect badge. I can see here's my image. Here's my description. Um, I made it so that people could pledge for the badge. Um, you know, I do have to say that I uh, created the badge and I sent it out and I invited uh, a bunch of my students, my grad students, uh, they were awarded the badge for helping me test the environment. I did learn a couple things about what to do and what not to do in terms of the badge. One of the things that I learned is that I was very vague about what the badge would be awarded for. So then all sorts of random people started pledging for the badge and I was like, I don't have any proof of what you did. Um, so one of the things I'm going to you know, I'll edit in there is a way to, uh, you know, provide me some physical proof of this, uh, of, you know, why you deserve the badge. And then you can nominate people. Uh, if you go to badges.mozilla, you can also see all the other badges that they have out there, stuff that was awarded. Um, so if I go to the mentor level badges, I can click on that. So, I mean, the nice thing is that the real power in the badges is in the metadata. It's not really in um, the images or anything else. So that's why I know there's that, that challenge that we have about gold stars. That's one of the challenges. That's where the value comes from. Uh, can I ask a question? 
Yeah. I'm having, I'm having major, <clears throat> sorry, connection issues, so I can't have like a lot of uh, windows open right now. But I know I've been to the Mozilla badge site. Is there a place where, like we were just talking in the chat about making some for the Klamook, you know, as an experiment this week? Is there a place on there where we can, like, make our own section for the, you know, so the whole community can go and play with them, or where we could post them, but just for the Klamook for now, or you know what I'm saying, just while we figure it out? I mean, does that make sense? I don't know if I'm at yeah. big. My suggestion would be uh, twofold. There are other badging platforms out there. I'm not as ex experienced with those. Um, we could test them out. Uh, I would suggest that for the purposes of our uh, CL MOOC, then possibly what we do is we develop a badge or, you know, one or two badges. We identify uh, what the specific, you know, what we want to award the badge for and develop it. Put the CL MOOC in as the tag and then basically start to award the badges, uh, you know, we're going to learn a lot about what badges do and what they don't do by developing them and start to award them. I and guess what I mean is like a, a collaborative place to develop. So let's say I start making one and I put it on the Mozilla site and tag it. Can someone else find it and edit it too? Or I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, is there a place to store it while we're developing it collaboratively so everyone can access it? Or do we just have to share it like with a, as a file on like a like a Google Drive or like a document or something? Well, let's say we went in now and we said, okay, we're going to create a new badge, and I'm going to say it is the uh, and I'm going to pick some random. This is always fun when you do this in your classroom. We're going to pick some random image off my computer. And I'm going to say test badge CL MOOC. I'm going to tag it as pound CL MOOC. Uh, should awards be limited to one per person? Yes. Uh, should the badge accept nominations? Yes. Uh, nominations auto approved? No. I'm going to create it. So now I have the badge that's in there. I can edit. I can delete. The challenge is how do we set it up so that other people can basically get involved and change it and award and stuff like that. So the badge is there now. So if I go to, I'll save that link and I'll put it over here. So what happens when you guys click on that link? Can you award that to other people? Uh, no, I don't believe we're able to. Let me see. Well, I'm trying to sign in. So if I had this uh, issue oh, I'm, bag... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know what? I'm not signed in, so perhaps once I'm signed in. I mean, that's one of the... Ch uh, I would say, you know, maybe you have one individual that, you know, maybe if you do use the uh, Mozilla platform, maybe organize and develop the badge on Google Docs or someplace... And then, yeah, Chad can nominate people. So you'd have yeah. to organize it and develop it in Google Docs. If you use Mozilla, I know there's other platforms. Um, organize it there in Google Docs, build it, have one person develop it and put it into the, the, the badge platform, and then nominate other people for the badge. So uh, I think this is a great idea. And the thing I was going to say, too, is that Another space that is using the Mozilla Open um, Badge, um, the Open Badge infrastructure is um, P2PU, um, and Karen Fassenpower, one of the facilitators of our of our MOOC, is um, is essentially you know the 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 leader, one of the co-leaders and co-developers of P2PU School of Ed, and so it so it wouldn't be um, 
so it's it's PDPU is you know has taken the code basically for the Open Badge initiative and and allowed you to become a badge creator. So I think this is what Ian was talking about. It wouldn't be at Mozilla itself necessarily, but it's using the Open Badge infrastructure from Mozilla. So the nice thing about the way P2PU is structured, and I haven't actually built badges in P2PU, so uh, you know this would be something that we could um, query Karen about. But I do believe it's a space where, as you're building the badge, you know there are conversation tools built in, so it would be possible to have a back and forth um, about the badge as as you're creating it. So that might be a more complicated option um, than what Ian was describing, but that's another possibility if we want to go that route. And the other thing that I'm wondering, if this is just simply an experiment, um, so I take back what I was saying about the framework. I mean, not that I don't think that that's important. Like, I do think that it is. Um, but that's, I think, if you're going to build some build out something that has complexity to it. Um, if this is really just an experimental badge for the MOOC, I, I would argue that perhaps it could be something really basic and simple versus, you know, an A badge versus, like, a set of badges. Mm -hmm. So So we could decide on, like, a thing, like, you are a G plus superstar poster, you know, or whatever, however we want to describe it. So, so this one like thing that a person is able to do, you know, with the metadata embedded in the way that Ian was talking about, and like that could be a simple badge, you know, that everyone gets. And, and I think what would then be important is more the conversation afterwards, like this sort of conversation about why badge is important. And we could bring Ian in again, you know, and have a conversation about, well, you know what? What? How? How might badges be used um, in a in like the pedagogical construct that makes sense to me? And as uh, and as well, I th oh, and if I can just say one last thing, I'm sorry. I know I've been talking for a while, uh, and I think the other thing too about um, about just having a simple badge is that what it what it does as well do, and I think this is I think you touched upon this, Ian. There's this power in the badge backpack. You know, this idea. So, so badges are important in terms of um, you know what it is that they are saying you are able to do, but what's equally important it seems to me is the fact that these badges live with you. Um, so this, so so if you're gathering your badges through Persona, for instance, this Mozilla login, um, you know those badges will stay in your Persona backpack, and um, that as well would be an interesting conversation. So people would, um, you know. If if we were able to figure out how to get this into their persona backpack, you know, they would have this CL MOOC badge as Ian is talking about, and that would be part of like essentially the start of the badges that they could accumulate over time. Um, Paul, I I uh, had a similar concern that you you mentioned earlier. This notion of valorizing certain skills, activities, and uh, states of mind dispositions. Um, you know, we talk about the value of full participation. Uh, do we really know what the effect of a badge is on people who are on the edges and margins? Maybe lurkers, maybe people who have signed up but not done much. You know, I, I would, as an experiment, I think it would be really cool to try. But as an experiment, I would also wonder what we were doing to the, to all of our participants um, as far as connected learning values are concerned. You know, is it equitable? Does it defeat full participation? Because some people say, well, they got it and I didn't, I can't get it. Uh, would it increase part participation? That's the thing that we don't know, and that's the, the only thing that, I, that would keep me from going whole hog about this, this idea. Ian, what do you think about that? I, I think that there's, um, there are certain challenges that occur when we, you know, highlight certain groups over others. Um, you know, it, to me, it would be interesting to see what the other people in the community value. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, well so I, mean, I think... Interesting to see what people in the community value. I'd be, you know, there. do you highlight connected learning uh, principles or do you highlight, you know, crowdsource it and say, we're developing badges, what do you think? What are... What are things that we value here in this community that we would want to highlight for our future members? Well, as far as I'm concerned, you know, we want uh, we want it to be equitable. We want people to be able to participate, and we want uh, we want to increase connection and uh, not reduce it. And we want the connections to be thicker and, and uh, more uh, more of them. You know, not only between people, but Outside of the MOOC, into other groups as well. Mm 
and that those would be the kind of values that in a badge that I'm not sure a badge really I mean a, a badge for a skill makes sense for me a badge for a value it's way tougher it's a way tougher call because a value is, is so complex as opposed to a skill well so I guess this is what I could imagine um, and you know you guys should push back um, I I guess I wonder if so creating like a more complex badge infrastructure or framework for the, for the entire CL MOOC, like that to me seems like something that can't necessarily be done quickly or that easily um, over the next couple of weeks. And again, you know, I realize that participation will probably continue beyond this, but I wonder if that could be a longer term plan that, you know, that we as a group, if we agree that this is something we want to work on, that we could work on. Um, and, you know, I have to say that this was something that Christina, Elise, and I did have conversations about, but we felt like it would be hard to implement, you know, given the time frame. You know, we have... Yeah, I think that you could um, have... You know, to I, bring I would... people together to think about that as well. Yeah, I would suggest... But, but I was just... Well, I was just going to add one last thing, um, yeah, which, which is just that I wonder, though, like, so I remember when I first got introduced to the Mozilla badge um, framework, and it was through using Thimble, and, you know, and I got a badge for a very low barrier thing. And basically, pretty much anyone could get that badge, I would argue. And I think it was a really nice experience. Um, so it didn't necessarily separate out, you know, those. I mean, obviously, there was some skill involved. It was like, you know, you edited something in HTML. But, like, basically, everyone could do that in Thimble, you know. And so, so it was just, and then what it led to was more the conversation about, well, you know, what, what are these badges for? What could they be used for? Um, so I guess that that's what I was wondering is like, could there be a longer term vision for, for perhaps a badge framework, but in the short term, there's like a discrete skill that could be badged as an experiment that basically everyone, it's low barrier enough that everyone could get. Yeah, I, I would say that to me, it would, it would be, um, it would make sense to have two initial badges, uh, and they, they'd be interesting is have one initial badge that's pretty simple, that's pretty much like the thanks for showing up badge. And right. you, you know, every make cycle, you posted at least one thing. Thanks. Here's a badge. You completed the MOOC. You, you, you posted one, one artifact, you know, or you had one shared learning experience for each of the make cycles. Um, the second level would be, it would be interesting to, you know, create a, a Google Doc where you start to crowdsource what would potential badges be? So either in Google Forms or some sort of survey, have people respond and say, here's what would be of value to us. You know, we are the community. We're the connected piece of this. This is what we think the badges would be. And if people go there and just post, then you give them a badge for, like, developing community or something like that. But I think that you should have just a minimal, nice, easy, here you go, and see what people's responses are. Is it something that they value, or does it not really matter to them? You got to start with just one simple little badge, see what people say, you know, test it out. It, there, I think, I didn't think I'd get excited about badges, and then when I was given the mentor badge and the Teach the Web MOOC, I was like, whoa, you know, but they had, that's why I put the post. They had specific criteria. Here's three things that you should do. If you do it, you know, whoever's on the board running the MOOC, they award the badge for that. When I when I think of badges, <clears throat> I hate to say it, but the first thing that comes to mind is Alfie Kahn <clears throat> and the notion of extrinsic uh, yeah. uh, value and how uh, that's all well and good, but we got plenty of that, <laughs> you know, in in, in institutions. And uh, I don't know. Some people might react strongly. People who are on the CL MOOC are there because they they intrinsically want to be there. Yeah, and that. And that, you know, I just worry about that. And there's a whole layer, there are layers of people connecting that we don't really even know about. You know, the whole problem, and it's not a problem of lurkers, it's just the existence of lurkers and what they, what they are. And, uh, you know, they're interacting in some way, it's just not visible. It's kind of the invisible web, so to speak. Yep. And, uh, you know, and it's, um, I just, I'm just a little 
leery, I guess is the best way of putting it. And I don't really, I'm not really, um, not, I don't really know enough to know whether uh, I should be leery or not. Paul, you have a last uh, parting thought? Yeah, I'll just uh, quickly say that I think this, um, this two-part possibility seems exciting to me, or even just simply the, the, uh, the low barrier, like you participated kind of badge that I think everyone could get. As long as it's followed up, I feel like, with a, a thoughtful conversation, like the one I think you've let us um, you know, in having, Ian. So I think I, I could totally get behind that. And I think it would be interesting then to create, um, you know, with the group, this notion of what a badges framework is over time without, you know, without the sense that like there's a rush on it, that it needs to be done by the end of, you know, this MOOC, that it could be something that is a service actually to, um, to future, um, you know, CL MOOC possibilities if, if this were to happen again or simply just through the exercises of learning like well what is it like to con construct um, collaboratively a badges framework. Um, I think all of these possibilities would be great and I, I guess I would just argue for um, I mean I'm, I'm just repeating myself but for like this low barrier possibility that could be distributed to everyone that would then lead to you know a greater conversation. Uh, but I have to run to another meeting, and I just wanted to thank you all for starting this conversation. I think it's exciting, and I just wanted to say that, actually, one last thing. Um, you know, badges have been an interesting part of actually the connected learning work in the sense that um, there's not a badge framework for connected learning, but in the constellation of digital media and learning work, you know, Mozilla has been leading the way with regard to badges, and, and so I think we could see ourselves also as 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 being learners with regard to, well, what, you know, what are the intersections and what are the deltas, basically, um, Terry, you know, so if we see ourselves also as well being pioneers around this and, you know, examiners and inquirers, that might be an interesting stance to take that could, um, you know, be a service to the entire DML community. Um, so that's maybe putting too big a spin on this, um, but but, you know, I think if we see this all as experimental, I think we'll be in good shape as long as we can explain the experiment to others. <laughs> I agree. I think that that's the biggest thing is that we don't know. There's a lot about these digital media literacies that we don't know. You know, exactly. we need to, you know, we need to take the, the risk. You know, we have the opportunity now. We need to be thoughtful. You know, and Terry's absolutely right. There might be, you know, we're talking about motivation. You know, it's probably one of the motivations and dispositions, you know, so it's a challenge. So everybody's got something to think about for a while. See you, Paul. Okay, thanks. Terry, you want the last word? No, I, <laughs> I guess I just took it. <laughs> I, I, I do think that um, it's, um, it's absolutely fascinating um, uh, what we're talking about here. Uh, you know, taking something, valuing things. And um, also, it's about mastery and the need for mastery, and how appealing that is uh, as a as a human um, need. You know, I think of mastery as as uh, uh, part of uh, of um, kind of Maslow's uh, hierarchy with water and food and <laughs> air and things like that. And mastery, I think, is absolutely there as well. And anything that leads. To a, to a feeling of mastery and competence is is good is is intrinsically good. It's whether it's used that way or not that is my, or it comes to be used that way or not is was what worries me the most. Yeah, I agree. I think that there's two challenges uh, or or two opportunities depending on how you look at it. One is that documentation of learning or life choices. You know, so we say, okay, I I want to know how. Terry got involved in, in, in the Connected Learning MOOC or in National Writing Project. And so imagine I could look online and see a, a, a bunch of credentials or your, you know, your CV or, okay, I can see the path that he took, but then I'm sure there's a lot of other stuff and a lot of other expertise that he has that's not documented by those traditional credentials. Um, you know, there, there's that, that level that 
this as an opportunity to, to help us provide. Um, you know, but the, the truth of the matter is that we don't know. You know, we're, we're still investigating, you know, badging platforms. You know, for some people, they, they work well and they make a lot of sense. Um, you know, we're still trying to, you know, and I've been thinking about it and trying to work on this for a while, and I still am unsure as to how it'll it'll play out. So, you know, I, I think it's we all have a lot to, to think about and a lot of chances to, uh, you know, play with it. Um I think uh, Gail's question is, are the badges personally useful for students, or are they another application of an outside evaluation? That's a, that's a good question. Sets up. Um, in my badges that we've been developing for, our, for the online research media MOOC, you have, in order to get a badge, you need to uh, complete all of the elements of the module. You have to do all the readings and all that. You need to uh, post a reflection. You also need to post an example of student work. So if it's online reading comprehension, you need to post an example of a lesson or a unit using online reading in your content area. Then you also need to, you also need to have a post a self-evaluation, and you need to have a mentor or like an expert in the community evaluate you as well. So there's many, and it's almost like a dissertation. There's like an outside reader on your work. And the reason why we built that in is we wanted, yeah, it's exactly attaining levels. We wanted to provide an opportunity to um, indicate value to the content that people submitted. So if I was some random teacher and I looked at this at Ian's online reading comprehension lesson or unit plan, how do I know if it's good or not? Mm -hmm. uh, and the way that we would do that is I would look at the, the evaluation, the self-evaluation that Ian put out there, but then also, let's say Terry is a mentor in the community. Terry looks at it and says, hey, it's good, but you could have added this, this, or this to really uh, build up critical evaluation or you know synthesis or stuff like that. And I'm a random teacher. I can look and say, well, now I know what improvements I would want to make on this or if this is of value to me. Um, but we don't know. We don't know if, if the, the badges will be worthwhile. Um, I have a, a my my program is starting tonight, and I'm gonna have teachers in the program as part of a grad class complete the work that's in the MOOC, and I'm basically gonna say, okay, here's all the learning that's going to occur. Here's all the readings. You get a grade for this as part of the grad program. If you want the badge, the only thing that you have to do differently is you have to post your work publicly online and Creative Commons license your work. That's the only difference, and I'll, it'll be interesting to see how many of the students go for the badge when mm -hmm. the only difference is that I'm going to go into badges.mozilla.org and I'm going to award you a badge. Um, yes, it, lists, it lives on badges, um, but then I can export it out to my blog, Facebook, wherever else. So it'll be interesting to see if, they're, if they value the badges. Um, I don't know. We'll start to figure that out tonight. Uh, I, I wanted to mention one thing, last thing about uh, what Gail says, and then I got to go too, uh, about attaining levels in an online game. And what I think is really cool about gaming is that um, it's it's an invitation to uh, succeed. And built into that invitation is the necessity of failure as you move towards mastery. And uh, you know, if badges did that. Then I would be absolutely wholeheartedly for them. You know, the sense of um, it, it, and your attitude is, okay, I'm going for the badge. Okay, I failed twice, so that's no big deal because it's just like, you know, leveling up in a game. You just keep failing until you get it, until you finally understand what, what's required. Um, that kind of badging, I think, is um, almost requires us to have, it does require us to completely shift our stance on assessment. And I, I agree. That's the revolution of badging. It just made just helped me realize that. I think it's also to me a big component of this is um, a lot of my thinking about writing comes from the the work you know in cognitive apprenticeship and you know Berater and Scardamelia and you know it's it's understanding you know the level of novice and expertise you know and saying okay 
you know, and I think students, and I think that we should be able to look at ourselves and say, okay, you know, here's where a novice would be, here's an expert, where am I in the continuum and what do I need to do to advance my skills so that I can get to the expert level? Um, you know, and that can be in writing, it could be in making, it could be in coding, it could be in anything, you know, what, and, and what does an expert look like? Where, where do they exist over here? And how do we identify that? It might just be through a badge, but there's no badges, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, Gail's got another great point, you know, the people that don't get badges, and this goes back to Paul's piece earlier, is providing an opportunity to get those low-level badges, you know, and have badges that are flexible and we can scale up. Um, that's, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to develop a, an alternative assessment culture or an alternative, you know, we're trying to assess process, we're trying to embed a lot of things and it's it'll be interesting to see the way that it plays out. I think part of the problem is that um, it's just in the language itself and our, and our metaphoric use of things like levels and high level and low level that automatically have connotations to them that we would like to throw away but we can't Yeah, because they are part of our thinking and our culture and um, when Paul talks about a low level you know it's as if uh, it's not as worth it's not worth as much as say a something that, that requires a higher level skill to you know it's that whole notion of low level and high level blooms taxonomy that drives me absolutely ape um, that that's a very tough nut to crack because you're talking about metaphorical foundations of language and well that's the that's the one thing that's really delaying that's the the main roadblock I'm having now in making final edits on the badges is I have the five participant badges and that's basically you show up as a teacher you do the work you get an individual participant badge when you get all five done then you unlock a meta level badge I don't know what that meta level badge is called <laughs> okay. And this is what's been keeping me up at night is no. if I call it a master badge, I'm not okay with that. No. So then what do I call it? A mentor badge. Well, that's Mozilla's language. I don't know if I want to use the same language, but then what do I call that that you're now a teacher or a guide in the community? Then above that, there's a higher level, which basically is me and whoever else has brought a couple people through. And affectionately, that's been called the shepherd badge. Well, I'm not a, I'm not okay with that either. So that's the challenge: is what do we call? Okay, so you you now are a teacher in that community. Are you a mentor? Are you something else? That so I, I definitely agree with you. Is I don't you know, and I'm not calling people masters in it. So that's the challenge. We we'll just call them big learners. Big learners. I like that. <laughs> but that would mean they were little learners. So that's exactly. Maybe, no that's matter what you pick. No matter what you pick. Well, that's uh, Jeannie's question earlier about the graphics. Just figuring out a graphic that would look big shots. Figuring mm -hmm. the, the graphic <laughs> for digital identity took us forever. Uh -huh. Digital identity, we're like, okay, it'll be a thumbprint. But then the thumbprint didn't look right. And then it was, all right, it'll be a barcode. And then I have kids in, in reading adolescent lit that are reading feed. And they're like, no way are we using a barcode. And I'm like, well, what about a QR code? And they're like, so we went on for weeks about what the graphic for digital identity would look like. Um, so that was a challenge as well. So, well, I think that we have a lot of things to think about. I think yeah, that a lot, you know, I appreciate you guys uh, coming out for the, the great discussion. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out now in the Connected Learning MOOC. Uh, yeah. you know, we'll post this, the video, I'll, I'll put the blog up there and we'll have every, you know, challenge people to, you know, write what they think about it, you know, you know, what value is there to them, but yeah. I appreciate so. the time. I appreciate the time that you guys put into this. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it. No problem. It. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. Bye, Gail.